This is Credit Matters and I'm Greg Mosco. It's the Global Fixed Income Research Group. Latin American markets faced unusual volatility in 2016. Political unrest, commodity price stress, and uncertain economies, among other factors, all played a significant role in a historically high number of defaults in the region. The 2016 total of Latin American defaults were last equaled in 2009 and last surpassed in 2002. Ten of the defaults were based in Brazil, whose long-term foreign currency sovereign credit rating was lowered to double B from double B plus on February 17th, following political and economic challenges, which are still prevalent despite former President Dilma Rousseff's removal. In fact, the ongoing investigation known as Operation Car Wash has amplified in recent weeks with Dilma Rousseff's successor facing accusations of corruption. S&P Global Ratings credit ratings on the sovereign and several Brazilian corporations were placed on credit watch with negative implications in late May, indicating potential downgrades if conditions materially decline within the 90-day period following the credit watch placements. In general, sovereign downgrades and defaults have a broad effect on downgrade pressure. In Latin America, negative bias, the proportion of ratings with negative outlooks or on credit watch with negative implications, is approximately 67% compared with the historical average of 20%. This high negative bias owes largely to sovereign ratings caps, as nearly half of sovereigns in Latin America have negative outlooks or are on credit watch with negative implications, and they may take some years to improve. When credit rating actions are taken on sovereigns, it is fairly common for government-related entities or other issuers with strong ties to the sovereigns, including financial institutions, utilities, and other corporations, to also experience rating actions due to their sensitivity to the sovereign's credit worthiness. As in our global default study, the default data for Latin America shows that ratings are effective indicators of relative credit risk. S&P Global Fixed Income Research has found a clear negative correspondence between ratings and defaults. The higher the issuer rating, the lower the observed default frequency. We use Gini coefficients to measure the correspondence between ratings and defaults. Gini ratios measure the rank ordering power of ratings over a given time horizon and compare the ratio of actual rank ordering performance with theoretically perfect rank ordering. If corporate ratings were perfectly rank ordered so that all defaults occurred only among the lowest rated issuers, the Gini coefficient would be 100%. The one-year Gini coefficient for rated Latin American corporate issuers was 77.8% in 2016, which is higher than the region's 20-year average of 75.27%. This has been Credit Matters. Thank you for watching.